Howdy there, Tinker Nerdians. A little birdie tells me that it's time for another comment show. This week we'll be reviewing the comments for two videos. This one and that one. So click here if you haven't seen either one of them. And without any further ado, adieu, adieu. Let's see what you guys had to say. It's my dream to make it to the comment show. Ooh, was I in the dream? Wait, that would be weird. Liked because TARDIS. If you like that, then don't blink. Can I do that with old Windows Vista laptop? Is there a way to do it without a Raspberry Pi? Can't I just use an old computer to do that? Can I make a cloud with a MacBook Pro running Mavericks? Yes, you can do all those things, but it's way too complicated to explain here. Okay, fine, here's the secret. You go to owncloud.org, you download the version for your OS, and you install it. Hopefully you weren't waiting for me to tell you that. Can you use an FTP server as a cloud? Yeah, you can use an FTP server to create online storage for any device, but that makes it more of a NAS than a cloud computing server. Then what's the difference with a NAS? The purpose of installing own cloud on your Raspberry Pi is to give yourself a cloud computing platform, i.e. allowing you to create and edit files online without having to use your computer's computing resources, similar to how Google Docs works. A NAS, on the other hand, is intended primarily for storage and you can't really do any cloud computing services with it. Which brings me to my next video, how to create a Raspberry Pi NAS. Well done, sir. You've cracked the code. How much transfer speeds are you getting? The only reason I found the RPI lacking for a NAS were the speeds. I get about 8 megabits per second read and 3 megabits per second write. I'll let Cincinnati Harry answer that for you. I get 5 to 10 megabytes per second transferred to and from. Not very fast, but enough to watch 1080p videos no problem. You can use BitTorrent Sync to access your files anywhere without port forwarding. Why is the Raspberry Pi not the best device for network attached storage? Is it slow or something? The Raspberry Pi is limited in two main ways. The first being that it only has a 10100 Ethernet port, meaning that you can only transfer data online at 100 megabits per second max. Now you can use a USB gigabit Ethernet adapter, but the USB scales that back to only 480 megabits per second. Long story short, even if you have a gigabit home network, don't expect gigabit speeds. The other issue is that it only supports USB 2.0 external hard drives, which is one of the slowest ways to transfer data. Ideally, you'd want to use eSATA or USB 3.0 for decent transfer speeds. I noticed you're using Mac OS X, and in your other videos you're using Windows. So have you been using Windows in a virtual machine? So I use a Mac as my primary laptop and I use Parallels to run both Windows and Linux virtual machines on it. And I also still have a beast of a Windows laptop that I use for various projects. Alright guys, thanks so much for all the comments. Next week I have a special Tinkernut Labs Halloween project followed by my regular Tinkernut tutorial, which I'm now calling my Tinkernut Discovery series. All right, if you got any value out of this video and would like to give some value back, please consider sending some Bitcoins my way or consider contributing to my Patreon campaign at patreon.com tinkernut. See you all next week.